Good morning, everyone. I'm Dawn, and I wanted to walk you through registering your account on Indigenartsy. Um, I wondered if a video might be a better option, so I'm not very good at this, but I will walk you through it quickly right here, and then I can post this where everyone will be able to view it. So indigenartsy.com is a website um, created by the Indigenous Arts Collective of Canada, which is a nonprofit organization. And the purpose of the website is to um, get us out there and uh, provide a venue for you to sell your work um, without having to open your own e-commerce store. So an e-commerce store like uh, Shopify is where you can sell your work online. The point to Indigenartsy is that I'm absorbing the, the work for you and um, absorbing some of the costs through the nonprofit with funding that we've redirected from the um, Indigenous Women's Arts Conference that was supposed to happen in March, but clearly is not going to happen uh, this year, but hopefully next March we'll be able to catch up on that. So in the meantime, I'm gonna walk you through setting up your uh, account on Indigenartsy. Um, up at the top, you can see I've clicked my account and hopefully my internet will cooperate with me. You're gonna register here. Um, so you put in your email address, your password, and click here, I am a vendor, and fill out the rest of this. So your shop URL, you're gonna have your own store on Indigenartsy. So whatever you want that to be called, that's what you're gonna put down here um, in your shop name and your URL. And when someone comes to Indigenartsy, they're gonna see indigenartsy.com and then they're gonna see your store. So it could say Dawn's store. Um, you want to check that you have read and agreed to the terms, of con terms and conditions. This is up here under vendors. It's really important that you have a look at this because um, on this page is gonna show you how you get paid um, the requirements for being on the website. So some of the important requirements um, are that you are indigenous. And because this money that I've got is to be directed to indigenous artists only, I have to be careful who comes on this site. So um, in a couple situations, you may be asked to prove who you are, uh, whether that be status card or your connection to a community or your connection to living Indigenous people. Um, we can work that out to make sure that um, if you are eligible to be a vendor, that you will be able to be a vendor. So this is the page for terms and conditions that you really need to know about. Down here, there's these tabs. It's gonna walk you through some of the rules that I've established um, that protect ourselves and our culture. Um, indigenous identity being the first one. So you can read through that and see if you qualify to be a vendor on Indigenartsy. Fees and payment policy. This is going to explain to you how, when you sell something, how you will get paid for that product and what you will get paid. So. What I've done here is kind of, uh, most people are fairly um, um, comfortable or understand or have experience with, um, with um, Etsy. So I'm kind of modeling things after Etsy, but without getting rich. So basically, um, this is some of the things that you will pay if you open a store in Etsy. Um, whereas here with Indigenartsy, because I'm a nonprofit, I'm, I'm not trying to make any money. So we don't have listing fees. Um, you don't have to pay to register. There's no subscriptions. You can post up to 25 products and you know, we can even go over that. These are just um, kind of vague, but you don't pay per item fees. We're at Etsy. You're going to pay um, for transaction fees. You're going to pay to list your product. And while these numbers don't seem like a lot, they really do add up. So um, if you're looking at money and what's the most feasible way of doing things for you, you might wanna very carefully step through Etsy and see what the charges are gonna be. Um, and, and you can post yourself on as many of these websites as you want to. Um, but I want you to review this to be clear that at this time introductory, I'm gonna take 8%. So um, what that means is 4% is the, 
is a transaction fee. So no matter what happens on any gateway, on any e-commerce site that you're on, you're gonna pay a 4% transaction fee minimum. Sometimes it's five, sometimes five and a half, six. And what that is, is the um, method to which um, people are paying to buy your product. So if it's through PayPal, it's like 3%, 4%. Um, Square is another one, um, Stripe. So all of these, every time a transaction goes through, those companies take um, a percentage of that transaction. So um, the other part and the reason I'm charging 8% is because I'm a nonprofit and I'm a volunteer, this has to be managed. So 4% is what I'm asking you to offer me. So um, just to help me run um, the website. Because I don't get paid and I'm a volunteer, I have brought Nikki on board who is going to uh, assist in getting you guys set up and, and taking care of the website. So I have to pay Nikki. Um, it's not free labor. So um, this 4% is going to go back to also paying Nikki. Um, and I'll do as much as I can volunteer wise. And I, I don't intend to take a paycheck from this as long as I can sustain it without destroying my life because it's going to be busy. Um, so here's what you want to walk through um, and look at very carefully and know what you're paying. So here you're going to pay 8%. Um, that is the bottom line of, of what you'll pay. Um, also here is taxes. So know what you have to do so that the, our federal Canada feds say it's the rule is you have to charge HST if you make over $30,000 a year. Then you would register and get an HST number. You would charge HST, your customers would pay you, and you would remit that to Revenue Canada. If you are in that situation, then you have the ability to set your taxes here in, in your dashboard, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, delivery, again, everything is up to you as the vendor. So if you sell something through this website, um, you will have to use a delivery system like Canada Post, um, pack your item, get the tracking number and return to your dashboard and put in the tracking number so that I can see that parcel has been shipped. And um, at that point, um, the transaction would be closed. So this is really important. Um, the reason it's super important is because if we get people on this website that I don't know and that you don't know, um, they could very well be selling things but not shipping them. And that makes us all look bad. So um, this is my way of making sure that the product gets shipped. Um, to the customer. I also have ways of contacting the customer and making sure that, that it was done properly and efficiently. Uh, there's a handmade policy, prohibited items policy. Um, this is, so handmade is, is pretty self-explanatory. If you're printing on products, um, you would have to explain who is making the product. So if you're selling t-shirts, it's not handmade, but you designed it. So you have to make sure that, um, that you're willing to say that you've designed it and that so-and-so has printed it for you. Same as Etsy. Um, prohibited items, clearly there's a lot of those. Weapons, um, drugs, things like that. Um, smoking paraphernalia. But also in our prohibited items, we're looking at um, things like um, sacred items, um, like pipes, um, medicines. Also, I'm also looking here very carefully at products related to crimes against Indigenous people. So I think right now it's really important that we remember uh, red dresses, um, the handprint imagery that came up this year or last year, um, orange shirts, and anything to do with um, BIPOC, uh, Black Lives Matter imagery or text. Um, so what I've done here is implemented that if anyone is going to profit from red dress imagery, from the handprint imagery, uh, if you're going to profit from selling orange shirts or anything to do with orange shirts, then 10% of your proceeds are going to come back to me personally. I'm going to collect that and then I'm going to choose, uh, I'll collect it over the year and then at the end of the year I'm going to choose 
um, a really uh, a valid real site that contribute contributes to the healing of of people. So then I will take that 10% and I will donate that to a nonprofit org that's going to direct that into healing. And um, if you need to discuss that further with me, please do. This is also uh, the other things that you would want to read over to make sure that your products are okay to sell on Indigenarency.